Hi, I'm Sandy Genovese, and here's the scrapbook that we're gonna make today. It's a little mini book, and you can see that I've titled it The Sky's the Limit because I've used it to hold photos of Allison skydiving. And what's kind of fun about this scrapbook is that I'm gonna show you how to create a book where the first page is a single page, the last page is a single page, and all of their interior pages are actually double. And what that means is every page can have a pocket where you can put something, slide it in, have information, and then slide it in and out as much as you want. What I did was I wrote like an introduction and sort of a title, and then Allison sent me her photos. I sent her all these little cards that she journaled in her writing and talked about her experience skydiving on the cards, which, you know, the fact that they go in pockets means that I could send her the cards loose. She could fill them out. She made a mistake. She could do another one. And that way she sent the cards back to me and the cards then have been inserted into the pockets in each page of the scrapbook. And then I just added my closing at the end of the scrapbook. In order to create this, we're gonna start with an oversized piece of paper, but I am gonna show you at the end how you can do the same thing with 12 by 12 paper. It just results in a little smaller scrapbook. I started with really a big sheet of paper. The paper that I started with was 16 and a half inches by 22 inches. And you can find scrapbook paper that's oversized like this in the art section of the craft store. I've seen it in Hobby Lobby. I've, I've been in tons of Michaels. They all carry, it's usually Canson is the brand. It's acid free, it's gorgeous. It folds and it works really well for this. Once you have the paper cut either to this dimension or it can be any dimension, at the end I'm gonna show you lots of other choices from different papers that started different sizes. The reason you can start with any size paper is because you only have to worry about two things. You're going to divide by fourths the long way. It doesn't have to be the long way, but one side is going to divide by fourths. So in this case, dividing it by fourths, I don't even have to measure because dividing by fourths is simply folding it in half like so and then folding one half back and the other half back and this way you get accordion folded into fourths and you don't have to measure for th so I've this way was divided by fourths this way is going to be divided by thirds so in order to get the thirds I am going to have to measure and I went ahead and I measured that and if I start with five and a half and put um draw my line and then another five and a half that means this will be divided into thirds. So I've gone ahead and I've drawn a line. You don't normally have to draw that. All you really need to do is fold it, but you're going to then fold on this line. Let me fold this over at the five and a half inch mark. So I folded that and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this end. I'm going to fold at five and a half inches and fold all the way across. So basically, I folded this way by fourths, accordion folded, and then I folded this way by thirds. So at this point, you're going to cut, and you only need to cut not all the way to the end, but following the third, the lines that were divided into thirds that I did with pencil. Uh, let me show you what you're going to cut first so you don't get ahead and actually cut something that needs to not be cut. You're going to start at one end and you're going to cut along that fold or that pencil line until you reach the final crease and then stop. Then you come down to the next row, but you start at the other end and you're going to cut along that crease line until you get to the final crease right here and then you stop. So I'm going to start on one end and if you have a paper cutter of course it'd be great because you could just really quickly cut this but I'm just going to cut right along my pencil line and I'm starting to approach that final crease. I don't know how easy you can see. I'm going to cut to the end and then I'm going to show you. See, this is the final fold right there. So I stopped. Now I'm going to come over and start on this end right here. So I'm going to pull this back around. 
start on the other side of my line that was divided into thirds and cut again right along that line. So as I'm getting close, you can see how normally I would just get up and go to the paper cutter and just swoosh in one slice. You can cut to this line. Here I'm approaching my final fold, right? That crease line there, that's where I want to stop. So I'm going to cut to there and stop. So you can see what you have is cut to this line and stop. And then on this end, cut to this fold and stop. Once you have all the folds and the cuts, you're going to just accordion fold. You already have the fold line. So you're going to refold on those lines to get to the end. And then when I get to this one, I'm going to fold and I can fold under or over. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go under and then accordion fold back the other direction until I get to the end. I'm going to poke that underneath and accordion fold again till I get to the end. That is it. That generates, I'm going to give really strong pressure to create nice folds. So when I hold this up, you will see that what I have is a single front cover, a single back cover, and then all of the inside pages are doubled. If I turn this, you can see, see how this is going to be two pages glued together? This is going to be two pages glued together. Not only does it mean that all of these double pages are thicker, but they're perfect for pockets. Now, I've already marked on this one, I've marked the first pocket. Let me show you the dimensions for that. So you're going to open it up past what would be the front cover. And then I took a piece of paper and I've marked it on here. You're just going to cut a strip that's two and a half inches wide and it's five and a half inches long because that's the size of my pages. But I came in three quarters of an inch and I marked it. And then I came in three quarters of an inch from the other side and I marked it. And I'm going to line this up with the bottom and the edges. And then you can see I've drawn with a pencil starting at the three quarter inch. I've drawn my pencil line and stopped at three quarter inch. And that shows me because I'm going to do a pocket on every facing page. Since I have to do so many, I think it's fastest to actually make a pattern. Once you have marked where you're going to do that, you're going to cut it. But I've used really heavy, you know, thick cardstock. It's not likely to be an issue, but sometimes if you cut a slit on thinner paper, over time that slit will continue to tear on its own unless you stop it with a little circle punch. So I'm going to take my screw punch because I don't have a hole punch that can slide this far in. So this is the screw punch that I got years ago. I bought it um, at a, an art supply store. It happened to be in San Francisco, but they carry them at almost any art supply store. I also noticed that Martha Stewart makes her line and you can see that I bought this one at Hobby Lobby. And this one actually makes it easy for you to see that there are different size tips that cut different size holes that you can place into the, into the tip of the screw punch. If you do much punching, especially in the middle of the page, you're going to want it. So I'm going to take the screw punch and I'm going to put punch into my cutting pad and I'm going to just take the, um, a very small, I can't read, I don't recall if this is like a 16th or of an eighth inch hole that I'm going to do at the end of my pencil line. And I'm going to just hold it. It's called a screw punch because of that circle action. You can see that it's cut that circle out. I'm going to make sure that my cutting pad's underneath this and just pressure coming straight down. It makes it screw right into the paper. It's just the handiest thing for when you want to cut a hole somewhere in the middle of a page. So I'm going to hold it in place, punch it. I can see that I need to poke that hole all the way through. So let's pull that hole out. So you have a hole and I would go back with my scissors because that would drive me crazy and clean up that I probably should have put just a hair more pressure. So you end up having the holes at each end, which are going to prevent the slit from wanting to tear. Then I'm going to put the cutting pad back in place and I'll take my X-Acto knife and I'm just going to cut right along my pencil line. This is what is going to actually hold. It's going to create the pocket that will hold those cards that I had Allison write in her own handwriting or printing. I can't remember now if she printed or hand wrote. So once you have that slit, and of course you can make your slit any size. I made the slit 
so that it would fit the size of the cards that I'm using to slide into these pockets. All right, you're going to do that for all of the facing pages. Once you've created the pocket on all the facing pages, then you want to seal it up. You need the pocket first because you need to be able to get to this back side. So once you've done that, now you're going to just close it up. So in order to close this page up, I need to be sure that I leave, and sometimes I actually take, and on the back, this is where, if I put a card in here, you'll see what I mean. This is where I need to be sure I put no adhesive. This has to be able to slide in and out. So I want adhesive on the outside edges, and it can be solid back here. I'm gonna mark with an X. This is the spot where I don't want adhesive. That way, when I'm putting adhesive, I make sure that I don't forget where to put it and where not to put it. Otherwise, I want the bottom, the sides. Let me go up this side the top and then I want you know can have I can have plenty now I tell you this every time remember you're gonna put more adhesive than I do I just do enough to make it quick then I'm going to go ahead and seal it just pressure to seal it so now I've created this first sturdy double page but it has this really cool pocket that's great so that I could go ahead and slide the cards in that are going to have, in this case, Allison's own uh, journaling and her own handwriting. Once you do that for all of the facing pages, you'll end up with a book that has 12 pages. And that 12 pages counts the, the front and inside front and back cover. So if this is page one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So you'll have 12 pages. Once those are all glued together and the pockets are all created, let's look at the cover. I ended up cutting a cover that was just a little bit larger so that I didn't have to be quite so careful when I put it inside. The dimensions for my cover are four and three fourths by 11 and three fourths. And right in the middle, I have a spine that's three eighths of an inch. So I've scored and I'm gonna turn it in black. It's not so easy for you to see my score line. So I already went ahead and I folded it. But you can see that I've scored right in the center, so I have this 3 8 inch spine. In order for that spine to stay sturdy and not want to collapse, I've discovered over years that it's helpful to support this. So I'm going to put adhesive right in that channel, that 3 8 inch channel that's the spine. And I'm going to take a piece of chipboard that I've cut just a fraction, just a hair under, three-eighths of an inch and I'm going to double check and make sure that I don't get it right that I clear my fold lines on both sides so and then if I have any adhesive that's sticking out I'll get rid of that so I now have nice sturdy support for the spine of my book so it won't want to really collapse over time you can go ahead if you want and decorate it now. Let's go ahead and put the book in and then I'll talk to you about the decorations. All you need to do is to put adhesive on what's the back side of the front cover and the other side, the flip side of the back cover. Remember, you're gonna do more adhesive than this, but that's enough for me to put it into position, fold it, and just the pressure will put it into position and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put adhesive. You're going to put lots more adhesive than that and close over what was the back cover and you can see how you'll now have the book with all your pages inside and your pockets ready to go so when you talk about embellishing the book, really now that you've got the structure, you can go crazy and you can do whatever you want. I thought I would just show you a few of the things that I did in mine. If you look at this, you can see that all I did was just cut some paper and tear some paper in order to create this embellishment. And then I wrote the title with a, a white pen. So here was a little strip of yellow that I'm going to layer. And then I've taken some pattern paper and I'm just tearing it because I like that kind of rough torn edge. Somehow it seems like it sort of goes with the theme of this sort of wild scrapbook where she's doing her thrill seeking things like skydiving. I'm gonna put, you're gonna put, remember, 
lots more adhesive, but I'm going to stick this down so I just have the one side to trim. And then I would add adhesive to the back of this. I'm going to add it to the cover. However, if you look back at my original, you can see that I've also added this little strip. This is just the flip side of this paper, the paper that I tore off. I'm going to go back and of course I would do all this with adhesive, add in this other layer because I just felt like it needed a little more warmth. So I used the red as a little embellishment that I could put on the scrapbook like so. And then I went back with a white pen and added that journaling and that was it. When it came to the interior pages, you can see that basically I just have the cards and I've added some, a few little metal embellishments. And then mostly I've just used stickers to add little details to the pages. This is a circle punch, but you can see how the various um, stickers off of a sheet have just been used to create the other really very simple embellishments. I think I skipped a page, but they're all, they're different um, designs, but the same idea. I wanted it really easy to find where the pocket was. So that's why every page has a little sticker strip that aligns right with the slit so that it's easy to see where the pockets are and where you're going to pull them in and out. This is the one that I made for skydiving. This is a, a much smaller version. I don't recall for sure. This is a little brag book and I started with a much smaller piece of paper because I wanted the brag book to be, you know, a size that you could fit easily like into a little somebody's purse, something that would be really simple. But you can see how it makes a cute little brag book. I thought I would show you if you start with a piece of 12 by 12 paper, this is the size book that it results in. Your pages end up being three inches by four inches, end up being the finish size if you start by with a 12 by 12. If I open this all the way up, you'll see what I mean. Here was a piece of scrapbook paper that was 12 by 12. And when I accordion folded and tucked it under and then accordion folded and tucked it under and accordion folded. I end up with this finished book, still 12 pages and a front and a back page. And then all these double pages that are ready to be glued together for extra stability and for pockets. If you want, you know, you can create this style of scrapbook with any size paper. It makes it perfect for photos of virtually any theme.